hey it's me little Frenchie and today we're gonna do these flamingos I picked flamingos I was just gonna do one and then I decided I'm gonna do two kind of the shape of heart be all sweet and romantic because that's not normally me just kidding no <laughs> so we're gonna do this one with the double here's another one that I did and I kind of did like splatters on this one because you know me I love the splattering this one's without and then I have one down below that I actually painted in the video because I did that first um, but we're gonna supply the list four by six papers my favorite you can do larger or smaller whatever you feel just remember to proportion it on your page so when you're watching my video um, and you want to do larger go ahead and do larger and just make sure you get a heavy 140 pound weight paper that um, can handle all the water in this one so here are the brushes now you know the drill I love my number four number eight brush my rounded brushes are my favorite, I have two of these. These are the ones I always suggest people get. I also have um, a zero. Oh, this is my zero, this is my four, and this is my eight. Um, these are the ones you're gonna use. And in my video, I actually use this pen, and it's not water soluble, so you can use it um, for this video, just to get the detail of the eyes. So get the around the eyes, and then the actual pupil colors. I just want to say use what you have and I'll tell you what I'm using exactly but use what's ever in your palette and try to get what's most closest to it um, these are the colors I use if you don't have it that's okay use what you have and just try to find your voice and express yourself when you go through this painting main color Quince Adorn Red and this is by Daniel Smith one of my favorites I was just in the pack and I've really loved it cool whoops, cool red all right, the next color that we use is a cadmium yellow hue, and I use a Winsor & Newton. And this is the color that we use. It's gonna be in my supply list in my description. Um, a very yellow yellow, it's like a bright, bright yellow. And so very lemony is how I would describe it. The background, we're doing a sap green. Now you can create sap green. Um, you would use this yellow with um, a phaleo blue and you're just gonna have to mix 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 until you get that sap green but that's how you do it this phaleo blue is like a turquoise blue um, it's considered a blue but it's just kind of reminds me of turquoise actually I use this in the painting too for the in the background along with the sap green and then I just use of course um, French ultramarine blue but you could just use regular and burnt umber these two are what I use to make my black I almost never use black in any of my paintings. Um, some people are kind of snobbish and say it's not really watercolor. Um, the reason I don't use it is that I just feel like it's too dark for the painting. As you can see, it's very, the whole thing is really light and then to use like a stark black just for here would just be too much. And so this is, you can see created with um, burnt armor and French ultramarine blue and that's how I make my black. So I'm looking forward to seeing you doing this flamingo with me. And if you like my videos, um, subscribe, like my page, comment. If there's anything I can do for you to make this video experience better. I just want you to find your inner voice, your inner artist voice. And I want you to create and have fun and just go with it. So happy painting and see you on the other side. Thanks. Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my way Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my, that's my way everybody today we're gonna do this flamingo hope you're ready to do it they're kind of romantic I did it twice and it's kind of like the swans you know they're all cute little heartsy and I thought this would be a fun little one to do you see flamingo watercolors all the time and I thought it'd be fun to do two of them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by doing our guidelines and what we're doing is we're gonna just make kind of like a hump on each side and this, I might be kind of wobbly because my arm is working around the camera. 
and so I'm like got my whole arm curved around it so please forgive me we're gonna go up and we're gonna kind of they're known for their very s sort of curved necks okay come down and then I'm gonna do the other side before we do now I'm gonna go in and start just kind of did like a heart shape just basic and you can be more precise if you'd like or not but I'm just gonna and I'm doing my lines a lot darker than I normally do this is so the camera can pick it up and you can see what I'm doing usually as you see when I'm doing it you can't really see my lines too much um, but I'm doing it darker so as a viewer you can see it so I'm gonna come down here kind of towards the center I'm gonna make the neck smaller as I go up and as I start to curve that's when they start to get their round head and then they got this long beak that kind of curves under and I'm gonna do the same for this one it's kind of like a thicker neck and it gets thinner as it goes up until it gets to the head and then we have another I don't like this one so I'm going to just erase it just a tiny bit you can see we all kind of I don't do this beforehand so you could kind of see how to do it now we're gonna add in the beak so their beaks kind of go up and around their eye is the white it comes back down do a circle for the eye and I'm gonna do the same on this side and then have it come back down another circle for the eye and then they've got like this black sort of tip on the end of their beaks and they've kind of got this dark line that goes up and then the nostril same on this one now you can get yours more exact if you like but just have fun with it and just practice your shapes as you could see drew it in now here comes the fun part I'm going to take my number eight round brush and today I'm going to use sap green just because I think sap green looks lovely with a salmon sort of color I don't know if you can it's kind of hard to see but I'm taking my sap green and I'm gonna water it down pretty heavily and I'm just gonna go in and do the background now sap green isn't a very highly pigmented color so when you put it in it's not going to be real strong and that's kind of what I want in this background as I don't want it to be so strong just because I really want the flamingos to be the thing that stands out in this portrait now green and having like the pinkish orangish salmon color are kind of good contrasting colors together and that's why I like to do this set green because it's not like a real green it's more of a not quite a primary green and so it kind of matches with that whole color of salmon. I'm just going to go in and um, get the background and pick up more water. And if you ever feel like you get too much color on your um, brush, too much pigment or anything, you can always just grab in more water and push it around. And then that way it's not so heavy. So like, see how it's kind of heavy? You just go in and you add more water and push it around so you don't feel like if it's too heavy we're just gonna go in now I've got this wet and here's the little thing that I want to do I want my background to not just be straight up green and so what I'm gonna do in is take phaleo blue with my number four brush and get it wet now phaleo is that really strong blue teal color and you have to be water it down really well otherwise it's super strong and I'm while it's wet I'm gonna put phaleo blue dots all kind of all around just because I kind of that's also not quite a primary color and I think it looks good with the salmon and the sap green and so I'm just gonna put it in here and there just because I like how it spreads when it's the color still wet So I'm gonna, you can see as it sp spreads out pretty nicely when it's still wet. Okay. 
kind of pushes the other colors. I'm gonna go in and go do the other side. So the reason I did the colors right then and there is because it's drying fast on me and it might just be the weather. It's kind of been really warm where I live, which is not typical of this area. Usually it's more mild, but when you have that type of weather, it, when you're painting it, it makes it dry up faster. So I'm just going to do the background over here. I don't know. I got some little fun facts about flamingos for you. So you're not bored as we're painting in this background. Um, the reason flamingos get their color is from what they eat. And it's the same thing that's in carrots. So they like to eat shrimp and plankton. They're omnivores, so they eat um, plants and meat. And they live to be about between 30 and 50 years old. I notice that a lot of birds tend to have longer lifespans. It's kind of interesting. I have a friend who has a, oops, has too dark. I'm just going to go in here and, there you go. Just kind of dabbed it with my um, paper towel. See, the phalio has that thing where it's like, very strong. I like how it spreads out. This side might look a little different from the other since I did it at a different time. I'm going to pause this and dry it because I used a little bit too much water here. And I know we don't want to watch paint dry because that's incredibly boring. So I'm going to pause this and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I dried it. Took a little bit because I got my paint kind of heavier in there. So what I'm gonna do is take my number eight brush, and I'm gonna take my my rose sort of red. Now my suggestion is if you don't have the same colors as me, to just use a cool, a cool red, right? So remember when we talk about this, cool reds are, tend to be more on the blue side. Warm reds tend to be more on the yellow side. I like the cool red you see when you use it um, what I'm doing is not using such a heavy not such a heavy um, pigment I'm using a lot of water with the paint and if it gets too heavy you see how it's really heavy there and it's really bright I'm gonna brush it or push push it push the pigment with the water up and it's gonna help it I'm gonna that should be enough to cover the whole this flamingo on this side and I want to kind of keep it wet so I'm going to actually add some more water and the reason is, is we're going to go back in as soon as I'm done with this and I'm going to take my yellow I, I have to double check but it's a, a cool yellow it's not red and not very blue it's just a bright lemony yellow um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take my number four brush and I'm going to dip it in the really bright here you see it I'm gonna dip it in here and then I'm just gonna do lines so I'm literally just mixing the color on the paper and the reason I'm doing this is because it's gonna come in and we're just gonna do lines like we're, do we're brushing in it's it's um feathers and you can see it's giving it that nice salmon color and if I use a little bit too much yellow up here like I can see that I have what I'm going to do is come back in and grab some more of my red and brush it in there and you can see while it's still wet do you see how it gives that illusion of feathers just love it when it's still wet like that and then it'll dry and then we can go in and add some more you see you can just kind of push 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 the color now I seeing this I hate the lines and usually I'm very light with handed with my lines but please do that when you're doing your painting unless you like that effect and you can actually when you're done go in with a marker not a marker but a pen so and also good pens um, permanent pens and what they are they're they're pigment based 
ink base instead of water base so you can do watercolor with them now I'm gonna have a purple but if you don't have a purple mix it with your red and like a French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna go in and just take a little bit of my purple and just go right around the edges here not too high up but just enough give it some shadowing and just add a little bit in here and the same down here so I'm just gonna add just a, a little bit and you see I'm doing my lines I'm kind of curving curving them like they're feathers now you don't I my style of painting is I probably don't do quite the detail some people do when they do their paintings and that's okay now I'm gonna take some more of my my red my like rosy red and add it up here because I felt like it's too yellow and I'm just gonna layer it up here kind of push it there oh it's so bright <laughs> probably because I have the light on hopefully you don't see it now I'm gonna take some more of my red and I'm gonna add the kind of on their beaks add a triangle where you have the mouth is they have some red there kind of the same color as their that goes on both sides and it has another one that kind of comes up over here where the nostril is and while we're at it I'm just going to do the other side or the other flamingo and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my lemon yellow in there. So we were talking earlier about flamingos living to be 30 to 50 years old. So I don't know if you know this, but flamingos actually prefer to stand on one foot. It's quite interesting. <clears throat> Also, when I grew up, I remember we had this like little pond right off of Lake Michigan, and there are flamingos there. And my dad told me about the flamingos too, and I can't remember if I saw them or if or if they were there or not. Somebody imported them. A little town in Wisconsin. I'm also dabbing in yellow for the eye. Because I wanted to dry later on and this make it easier to dry so now I'm gonna go to the other flamingo and kind of do what I did before I'm gonna take my bigger brush because it's easier to spread it out and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side oh, this is gonna be funny because I'm gonna wrap it my hand around so hopefully it's not too funny I don't know if you know this about flamingos but they usually only weigh between five and six pounds which is kind of interesting since they're such large, they look large. I saw that fluff. I think that's what, that's my, my problem too. I'm just fluffy. I don't weigh a lot, I'm just fluffy. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna go in and wrap it around. Kind of like we did before. It's okay if you don't stay within the lines. It's your art and you're just learning how to use colors You know, it's starting to dry. It's just so warm out. I like the summer. I like the warm weather. I kind of pick flamingos because for me, flamingos are, um, oops, let's just fix that, are a summer creature, probably because of where they live. They live in warmer climates normally. Bermuda, Bermuda's bird is the flamingo. I always wanted to go to Bermuda. The Caribbean islands like the warm weather. My parents went to Bermuda when I was a kid and told me they loved it. The food was great, everything. The people were wonderful. Now you're going to go in and get some more of that really lemon yellow. Do you see on the other side how it's just drying and it's just giving that like lovely effect? Oops. All in one spot. That's all right. I'll go in and push it. We'll put some red in there a little bit lighter. 
as you can see, because I'm using the lemon yellow on the cool red, it's actually making that lovely salmon color that flamingos are. It's not like quite pink, pink, but they're not quite orange. I'm going to put some on here since it's already dry. And when you do that, you can see you can get some more detail in there. And it's just like the light reflecting off the colors and we'll go back in and maybe add some more pink. But as you can see, adding lines. And I love just the way it spreads when I put it on top wet on wet like that. You can see it. And it's like not completely wet, but partially wet. I'm going to go in and get my purple. Just add it just for like the shattering. So, oops, got more water than actual purple. I always worry that I'm going to use too much. That's going to be too heavy. So I'm going to add it on this side. A little on this side and then this side too. I'm going to wrap it up. And then we're just going to put in the feathers. We're going to let it. And then I'm going to go back to the other flamingo that's dry. And add a few purple where we put the purple. And just kind of add it. Have some nice shadowing. Not too much. Now this side's going to dry. Uh, oh, yeah. And now we're going to make black. Now, you can use black if you have it, but I find that when you don't make your own black, it tends to be too dark for your painting. And so I'm just going to do my burnt umber and just get like a lot of it on the pan. I'm going to take my, I use French ultramarine blue, but you can just use ultramarine blue. Those are my two favorites when it comes to making black. Ooh on a busy road and then I'm gonna I find that's the black I like now you can use phalio or cobalt and you can use a variety of different sort of um, blues and it'll give you different shades of black I uh, unfortunately I'm in like a lot of Facebook groups with watercolor and one person was offended because someone told her that her watercolor wasn't watercolor because she was using a black paint which makes me kind of sad that people are putting rules on her art you do what you want to do you do what makes you happy and what and what makes you feel like you have your voice now this artist had lovely paintings quite lovely and she liked to do like the mono, like the monochromatic sort of art and it was lovely like portraits just done in like a black and a gray and some other moderator told her, she yeah, it's not really watercolor. And you don't want to know what I think when people say stuff like that. I sew too. And when I sew, like, some of the quilters were always saying, yo, you have to do this or this with your quilting. And I found a good group who said, no, not true. You do you and your paint and your quilting. There's no, no fast rules. As you can see, I'm putting black on the tip of... The flamingo. It's on beak. This side too. And as you can see, I'm putting it in. Now there's at least six different varieties type of flamingos. And they're found in different parts of the world. And I'm gonna let this black dry a little bit. And then I might put another layer on it to make it a little bit heavier. As you can see, I put pretty heavy paint on here and I put just put on their nostril and it's just real simple and you know it's not perfect but that's something you have to remember when you're painting is don't beat yourself up and don't expect perfection because it's your art I'm gonna go in here and do a little too much and you can see it dried really really fast I'm gonna go in here and spread it out a little bit Now, if you like this painting, but you don't like the look of both flamingos, you can just do one and have it go vertical if you like. 
that would work too if you don't like the double um, flamingos or you're struggling with I know some people kind of struggle with oh that's too much paint I don't know excellent paint's too much they struggle with it's so it uh, dried fast like um getting the per perfect as you can see mine isn't very perfect but I've gotten to the point where I feel like I just let my paintings do what they want and be what they want and it's more about the experience and having fun while I'm painting them and relaxing and watching the colors flow. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of my brown. And I'm just going to kind of shadow it in a little bit up over here. I'm just put a little bit of just a little bit of image that's not so stark white. And over here. I know I hate my lines that are that dark and I've never really tried to erase my lines Oops. Oops. after I painted. I just figure I'm just most of the time I just paint for to relax. And I give my paintings away as needed. And I'm gonna just highlight a little bit with the lemon. It's not lemon yellow but that color. I'm just gonna just make sure it's not too much. Oh, yellow in here. And then I'm just going to take my, my French ultramarine, or if you just have regular ultramarine blue, I'm just going to put a few lines here and there. And now, here's the parts. I can't tell from this angle, but I'm going to take my really fine brush, but I think I need to find it. So, pause. Actually, what I decided to do instead of using my really fine brush that I like to use for detail, which I did in the other paintings. I'm going to show you something different, but normally if you have a fine tip brush, use a zero and you could see you could put in the detail, but maybe your hand's not steady or you're kind of nervous and you know, you, it's hard to do the paint with a brush. I'm going to go in and use this ink, excuse me, this ink sort of um, pen and it's, as you can see, it's like I put it over here and you see my brush is wet look it doesn't smear it at all so I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to draw around the flamingo's eye and just put a single dot in there so that's kind of how their eyes look and we do this side and a dot and there you have it. There's your flamingos. Now, if you're like me and you want to play and you can't stop, you can go in and add some more fine feathers. If you don't like, like I feel like my flamingo's beak isn't very dark over here. I'm going to push the color out and then um, add some more to layer it. But for the most part, this is my flamingo and I hope you enjoy it. If you make it, please show me what you've done. I would love to see your work and what you've done. I love to see other people when they do their art. I just love and appreciate other people's art, no matter their skill level or where they're at. I just really love seeing it. If you like my page, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and um, if there's anything I can do for you, I'll definitely try to do it. Thanks for watching. Happy painting!